Hey, how's everybody doing out there? My name is Crispina French. I am a textile recycling artist, entrepreneur, and activist, and I am super excited to be here with you today. Today is, um, we're just gonna, I got started a little early today, so I could have a chance to chat and say, hey, um, hello people waving at me on, on Instagram and on Facebook and YouTube, hello, hello. Um, so I got on a little early today because I wanted to kind of get started right at noon with our first day in the um, Sun Hat tutorial series that I'm doing. It's a four day series and I have it scheduled for today, tomorrow, Monday and Tuesday at noontime Eastern Standard Time each day for about 20 minutes. Um, so if anybody has any questions, you want to throw out some ideas or share anything on your mind, do that now. When it comes to be 12 o'clock, which is just a couple minutes away, I am not going to be able to check the um, comments until the end, at which point I'll do a little quick um, short tutorial. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, a short Q&A if anybody has questions at the end of day one. Um, and I'm going to put in the comments on, I'm um, going to try to do this on both, um, let's see, uh, let's see, hmm, I'm not really sure how to, um, hmm, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to figure out how to. There's a there's a landing page I created that has links to um, some free hat patterns, but I'll talk about that in a couple minutes. Um, if anybody needs to download those patterns or learn more about the schedule for this little mini series that I'm doing, you can um, head on over to that page. And I can tell you the address and then maybe somebody, some kind person who is listening could actually type it into the comments for me. I'm having trouble accessing my comments right now because I'm streaming on a bunch of different platforms. So the email or the um, website URL for that um, download for the patterns, they're free, is um, www. Crispina, which is my first name, and it's spelled C R I S P I N A dot eco backslash sunhat hyphen tutorial. So that will get you uh, more information about what we're just about to dive into. Um, and if anybody out there could um, take a minute and type that into the comments for me, that would be super awesome on whatever platform you're, you're um, on at the moment. Again, that um, URL for free downloadable sun hat patterns is www.crispina.eco backslash Sun hat hyphen tutorial. Sun hat's all one word um, in that instance. So it's noon in Eastern um, time here in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. I'm actually broadcasting today from my childhood home, which is actually my sister's house these days. And today is day number one for a really fun little um, kind of, it's a teaching community building uh, just a little window into the wild world of creative textile recycling and working in community. So I invite you to participate if this um, if this is something that um, is of interest to you. Of course, you can go back and watch recordings if you're not ready to dive in with both feet um, right now. But I just want to start. So. Um, again, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Crispina French. I am a textile recycling artist, activist, and entrepreneur. I run a community, online community, called the Stitcherhood, which is Crispina's Stitcherhood Recycling Society. And um, this is something that we do a lot in um, the Stitcherhood. So I wanted to share that with the greater public and let you guys know a little bit more about what goes on there. 
All right, so day number one, sun hat tutorial. Let's take this pile of used clothing, stuff that I have had kicking around. I got a couple of men's dress shirts in here, um, button up shirts. These are actually a really great type of material to make a sun hat with. This is a nice 100% cotton um, shirt that is um, my husband is never going to wear the shirt. He does not like the brightly colored, um, kind of fun little, almost like a rainbow color. It's not his style. So he gave me that to use. This is another shirt. I, you know, light colored patterns are nice for sun hats. Just think about how you're going to, um, wear it in the sun. And then this fabric, check this fabric out. This is like a traditional African style, um, top, I believe it's for a men's menswear, um, and this is like a batik fabric, so it has a little bit more body than the men's dress shirt fabrics, and the two pair really nicely together. And um, you can see that that men, the African, this, these are the the bottoms of that two piece ensemble, uh, and you can see <laughs> there's a little bit of those legs cut away because I've been making sample hats to show you. Likewise with my this men's shirt, again, that bright colored um, pattern is not my husband's cup of tea, so he gave me that shirt too. And here's the sun hat sample that I made. So I just want to um, let you know that the first step in our sun hat tutorial is to get your sun hat patterns. So I have um, listed, like I said, to start with, there's a, there's a page. I'm going to try to put this in now. Let's see if I can access this. Um, uh, 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 let's see. Hmm. I'm not able to make a comment, but there is, there are free sun hat um, patterns available online. I have compiled a list of three or four of them. If you want to access that page, you can go to the URL that I will post in the comments um, as soon as I am able once the live part of this teaching session is over. Um, and you can also just Google up um, free sun hat patterns online, which is what I did. And I kind of surfed through a bunch of them and found four that I really liked. And the one that I chose to use for this particular hat, this is a reversible hat. So you can see I used um, an upholstery fabric fat, um, on top. I used uh, the African print that I just shared with you um, for this side. And then the inside is all one fabric, the top and the, and the brim. This is the brim. This is the crown and this, I'm sorry, this is the crown and this is the side. So this is all the same fabric and it's um, the plaid men's dress shirt. You can also use, and actually once you establish which pattern that you'd like, your first step and your kind of homework for today is to print out your pattern and cut your pieces. So the patterns that I um, have printed out are here. And when you're printing your pattern, the, these are two pieces. And then the third is um, you cut this. These are all cut on the fold. Um, and when you print your pattern, you're going to pay a special attention to the directions that accompany the pattern that you choose. Um, and you're just going to cut your pieces out. Get you know, So gather your fabric, cut your pieces out, print your pattern and then cut their, your pieces out. First, you're gonna cut them out of the paper so they're the shape of the patterns that you, the shape of the pieces that you wanna cut out of your fabrics. The different patterns are laid out differently. This is a second pattern that, that's not cut on the fold. These are cut, laid out this way, although you could, of course, cut them on the fold. Depending on your skill level with sewing, you wanna just get your pattern cut out, okay? Then, Tomorrow, we are going to talk more about what you do once you have your pattern cut out and your fabrics gathered, okay? So it's there's four little segments of this little mini course that I'm doing. And what you're going to do is turn your old clothing that's maybe in the back of your closet, maybe it's um, people in your family or your household that have pieces that are 
just kicking around that haven't been used in a while and you're gonna you're gonna need two different kinds of fabric you can use more but two different kinds to start with and you're gonna just compile your fabric cut out your pattern and make sure that when you print your pattern that is printed accurately that's gonna happen obviously before you print you cut out your pattern so find the free pattern that you want to use you're going to download it and then you're going to print it and most of the patterns that i shared have a page included in the in the pattern that measure it's a measurement page to make sure that you're printing the hat pattern accurately one of the things that happens if you're not printing your pattern accurately is that the pieces are not the right scale and they become kind of weird and um, not what you want. So if you have any trouble printing your pattern, um, I am not a tech person. I'm not the best person to help you with that. But uh, my suggestion is to find a young person, a teenager, or even maybe a, um, a tween who can help you navigate the ins and outs of printer issues with um, making a pattern especially with hats, it's quite important that the pattern is printed really accurately because each little increment makes quite a difference. You can see on this pattern, this is this is the Merchant and Mills bucket hat pattern that's included in the three, actually the four free patterns that I um, shared with you guys um, on that page that I'll enter in there. And you can see that the, the difference between sizes is quite small. There's just a little bit of variation between what is a medium a large and an extra large and when you put that on your head the difference is quite notable so you want to make sure that you're being accurate with your cuts and your printing the other thing i want to just share with you is that the this particular pattern which i love it's the merchant and mills free pattern that is um like i said on that page that i shared with a bunch of folks so the Merchant Mills pattern is a bucket hat pattern. And bucket hats have a very narrow little brim that don't do a whole lot for shading your face, which is what I need a hat for this time of year. I love to spend time outdoors and in my garden. So what I did is I took the brim of the hat pattern that I chose to use and I cut it. Can you guys see where it's cut here? I cut it straight across. I used a ruler and I just went straight across I cut it and then I inserted about three quarters of an inch strip in here to make that brim three quarters of an inch wider. And again, when you're talking about hats, three quarters of an inch is quite a lot. So imagine, you know, three quarters of an inch like on your face. If you measure that on your face, it's a lot, right? So that gives us this brim size here and you can model it for you. You can see that it's gonna do a nice job of keeping the sun out of my eyes when I'm outdoors. Um, so that's one, this is the bucket hat pattern with that wider brim. This is another one of the patterns that I shared. Um, this one's made out of a heavier weight upholstery fabric and um, it reverses. I made these samples up really quickly so I didn't have time to piece the pieces if you will but if you are a scrap hoarder like I am and like a lot of my membership are you can make fabric out of little tiny pieces and then cut your hat pieces out of that fabric so you can really incorporate like tiny little bits and the other thing I have to say is that this project is a great project for beginners it's also a great project for people who are not beginners who have a really established um, crafting or sewing process because it does enable you to have fun with the piecing. So, you know, if this is your pattern piece and you want to make this out of little strips of things that you might have have meaning or, or special textures or whatever, you can, like I said, maybe um, patchwork. A, you know a bunch of fabric so you're going to need about like a three quarters of a yard of fabric to cut your finished pieces from and you can either use that if you have say a shirt or a pair of cotton pants or something that's like a nice kind of summery weight you can use that as is or you can patch pieces together the other thing i just want to mention is that most of the patterns that i have shared call for um they call for uh, uh, 
interfacing, fusible interfacing. Um, and you can use fusible interfacing if you have that available to you. If you don't, I often use just a third layer of fabric. So between the two layers of the, you know, the, 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 you know, the fabric on one side and the fabric on the other, you can add a third layer to give you a little bit more kind of heft to that brim. This hat I did not do that with, and you can see that um, I didn't, you know, it's it's quite soft, the brim is quite soft. It's nice, so you can kind of ball it up and throw it in your bag, and um, it's not as bulky as it would be if I had used the interfacing. This hat I did not use interfacing for, and I kind of wish I did, because the brim is quite floppy. So when I put it on, it sometimes sort of hangs down like that in my face. Whereas if I had put interfacing in there, it would have just a little bit more body and, and tend to flop a little less. So those are my notes. Um, so really, that is my starting lesson for our sun hat tutorial. Does anybody have any questions? I wish I could see comments right now. I'm not exactly sure. Let me see. Oh, you know what? Hello, now I see them. Um, yeah, hello from Memphis and Saratoga and Florida, and I'm so glad you guys are here. Um, thank you for being here with me, and um, now I can put that URL up for some folks who are, um, who are watching right now, and you guys can access those free patterns if you haven't had a chance to do that already. If, if you're on my email list, you probably got an email with this information, um, you know, the last couple of days. Uh, so if you're not on my email list and you want to be, uh, you can access it there too. So there's the URL. Um, for the um, sun hat tutorial, uh, the sun hat um, patterns. Um, hello, everybody out there on Instagram, Thrifty Twin. Um, hey, Thrifty Twin, I know who you are, Maeve. Um, so yeah, that's the beginning of our sun hat tutorial. If you have, um, somebody says good question. Do you know, do the patterns have head measurements? So. Um, you know what size pattern to use for that's Catherine's question They you know the sun hat patterns that I posted are there's four of them and they're from four different um, companies, so some of them include very in um, very specific head, head measurements and others of them do not so you can look at those and decide Which pattern you'd like to use and which one speaks most um, clearly to you uh, the one that I chose to use here for the sample the Merchant and Mills bucket hat pattern um, has medium, large, and extra large sizing. And I do believe they had actual measurements. They did. They didn't have actual measurements. And then the one that's from um, the Liz um, Haywood one from Australia, this also has measurements, and it's it's in centimeters. So for those of us in the United States, you just have to translate your centimeter meter measurement into inches to choose the size that is going to work the best for you. As you know, hats are, you know, they either fit or they don't fit. So you want to, um, of course, choose the size that works the best for you. This pattern from Liz Haywood, I read um, she, this was like the first pattern that she made digitally. So there's not a lot of instruction involved. So if you're a beginner and you need a little bit more direction, I would not choose the Liz Haywood pattern. I would choose one of the other four patterns that I listed. That's going to give you a little bit more instruction and help to be sure it's the way that you need it to be. Like the Liz Haywood pattern doesn't have the, um, the square, the proportional square to um, get started to be sure that you've printed it properly, um, which I think is pretty important when you're um, getting started if this is your first um, project that you're doing like this. If you're experienced and you you know like how to use your printer well and you're really um, a pretty experienced sewer, this, this pattern is a really great pattern. So I don't wanna dismiss it. Um, okay, great. So I think I hit all the questions out there. Um, tomorrow I'll be back. But um, I want to just 
tell you that this is it is a sun hat tutorial that's what we're doing but i also want to just like talk to the idea of environmentalism in your craft right rather than just making a sun hat for whatever like uh, you know going to the fabric store buying yourself whatever kind of yardage you might choose for a sun hat and you know buying the interfacing and whatever this is um my way my <laughs> it's a little sneaky <laughs> of getting people who might not already have the, the recycling bug, just planting that seed and saying, hey, you know, like it's possible. This this particular hat right here was made out of stuff that was actually, um, you know, not useful. It was clothing that had been discarded, um, wrong size, wrong style, not, not really working for whoever was the owner and i was able to create this really cool sun hat from that waste material um and i feel like that's a really important part of what i offer the world and i i, I feel like you you know people who are attracted to my channel and to what i do are sometimes not really aware that this is not hard to do like you guys can totally make a sun hat as cool or maybe cooler than this one, based on your fabric choices, you can use fat, you know, maybe, maybe you have someone special in your life who is moving away and, or, you know, a college kid going off to school. Wouldn't it be cool to make that college kid a funky, groovy little bucket hat out of, you know, maybe a shirt that your grandfather left behind, or maybe a piece of fabric that was, this had meaning in that kid's life somewhere in their past. So this is a way to kind of tie stories together. It's a way to add meaning to your crafting. And it's a way to really knit, or let's reword that, really stitch a bunch of love and um, connection into the work that you do. So um, these sessions are all recorded. This is a live session. And like I said, I'm streaming on a bunch of different platforms. So you can go back and watch this lesson later. If you're watching this as a recording, welcome. Um, you can access this material, you know, as long as Facebook is around. So, or whatever, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Um, so you'll, you know, you might have to scroll back in the feed a little bit. If you're a member of Stitcherhood, all of these will be, um, saved right in our in our events um, folder. So if you guys want to look at that later, it'll be accessible there as well. If anybody's wondering what on earth um, Stitcherhood is, Stitcherhood is a community that I just launched. It's really exciting, you guys. It's, um, I, I launched, the first day of Stitcherhood was a thing, was, um, I think it was March 22nd, if I remember. Was it March? Anyway, it's a community of online entrepreneurs, hobbyists, and industry professionals that are all textile centric and interested in nurturing our environment. And it's all about recycling textiles and how to lessen our load on our sacred planet by being really mindful with our consumption based on textiles. So just in case you weren't aware, textile waste in the United States recently surpassed in volume plastic waste. So textile waste is a huge global issue that a lot of us don't know about or we are unaware of it. And so consequently, we don't realize um, that it's really important to consider your choices when you're buying clothing, when you're you know, purchasing your, you know, what, what, what kind of clothing do you want to purchase? Do you want to purchase clothing that's going to last you for, you know, 10 or 15 years? That's really high quality. That might be kind of a, a staple uh, style. That's not going to kind of trend out or um, become, you know, out of, out of date. Do you want to buy clothing that's maybe natural fiber and that's made in an ethical practice rather than mass produced by people who are underpaid and not well cared for in their jobs? So all of these choices go into um, the way that I think we can be really um, healthy in our, in our textile consumption. And that is really what we are focused on within Stitcherhood. So I'm going to put a link to the Stitcherhood um, uh, platform in 
the comments and I will post if you don't see it come up in your comments um, just know that I will post it there as soon as I can it's just a matter of um, being able to access comments while I am streaming here so um, check that out and let me know how you make out today tomorrow um, we'll be here like I said same time same station and before I head out I want to just say does if anybody has any questions ideas what do you what do you, tell me before you go um, what fabrics do you have in mind for this project what do you think you're going to be using for your sun hat and um, will you be machine sewing or will you be hand sewing so two questions what kind of fabrics are you going to use? Do you have fabrics in mind? Um, and are you going to be machine sewing or hand sewing? Let me know in the comments. Um, so, tell me what you think. I want to see. I'm going to. I want to see. I'm going to check this out. I'm going to show. There you go. There's the stitcher hood. Um, <laughs> that's so cool. I'm learning. I'm learning on the fly here how to post stuff on the screen. So um, Paisley skirt. That sounds awesome. 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 Mary F. I love Paisley and then machine and hand stitch. It's a great combination. The ones I showed today are machine sewn and I have a hand sewn version that I'm working on. Um, Cool, 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 cool. Um, me Murphy's gonna use um, hand sewing, and she's using cotton material from EcoWorks. Um, EcoWorks is not familiar to me, so if you have a chance, Me Murphy three fifteen, um, tell us a little bit more about EcoWorks and how others might be able to get in touch with that um, supplier for fabrics. Um, Christine is gonna machine stitch. Um, Lynn, Lynn is hand sewing. Um, I think she's wondering which pattern. Um, you know, Lynn, the the pattern from um, I think it's the fourth one listed on the page that I created. And is it? Oh, geez, I don't remember. I think it's the widest brim hat, which. For me, in the hot, hot weather, it's so nice to just have that little bit of shade on your shoulders, the back of your neck. Um, it keeps your eyes shaded, um, reducing the need for sunglasses and um, allowing that really good vitamin D to come right in. Um, and somebody's using quilter scraps and plan to machine sew, already have two hand sewn projects on the go. Good. Yeah, machine sewing is quicker, definitely. Um, some people get a little fearful about machine sewing if they are not um, comfortable on their sewing machine or maybe haven't used it for very long um, or in a while. Um, linen, Marty Mason is talking about linen, and linen makes a really nice hat. I actually, the, the one I'm hand sewing now is um, has linen on one side, so I think that it's, it's a nice weight. Um, yeah, so the Merchant and Mills hat is a nice pattern. Um, denim is also going to work really well. And um, yeah, those <laughs> corporate crunchy, my girlfriend Angelique. Um, I'm so glad you're here, girl. Yay. Um, denim works great for these hats, and hand sewing is totally fine. So if you're hand sewing, um, you're going to probably need like embroidery floss works really well if you have any of that kicking around. Um, and then you want a needle that matches your embroidery floss so they're not too hard to thread. Um, thread conditioner is another really nice tool to have. So speaking of tools, you're going to need, these are my scissors. I, I could not find my scissors for the longest time, and I just found them today. So you're going to need a nice pair of fabric cutting scissors, and you're going to need pins, pen cushion. And um, there's some hand sewing needles here as well if you're doing hand sewing. If you're using your sewing machine, you're going to just need um, some thread that, that works well with the fabrics that you choose. Um, so that's awesome. I think, let me just make sure I got all the um, questions and stuff here. That's, I think I got them all. So if any, if I missed your question, there's a, the scroll is going back quite a ways. If I missed your question, I will look through the comments this evening and I will answer any questions that I missed. 
And um, of course, you can add questions if you run across any as you go. And I will see you guys right here, same time, same station tomorrow. And I look forward to that. So have a great rest of your Thursday. And um, don't forget, it's Thrifty Thursday. So be mindful about your textile consumption. Just think about it a little bit. Think about on maybe on Thursdays, every Thursday, you can just kind of consider what is the best way to proceed with your textile needs and purchases. So with that, I'm going to head out and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks so much for being with me. All right. See you tomorrow.